All right, what up, Town Biz? What's cracking? Man, so did, did you watch the uh, Brona fight last night? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I caught it. <laughs> I caught everything <laughs> in its entirety. That's real. I uh, I watched it. I actually had Granados winning by one round or to a draw. You know, I thought he won the first three or the four rounds. I thought that might have carried him to the victory, but... You know, um, and in terms of Adrian Broner, I mean, <laughs> he is a uh, pretty mediocre fighter at 147, you know, and people get, in, in my opinion, people get tricked into the demand outside the ring, but he's not, he can't be a superstar at 147. He would have to go down to like 140 to even attempt to be a well he is a super he's a celebrity to even to be a superstar in the ring a celebrity in a real fight i think he got to go down to 140 but i i wasn't impressed with him i just think he's just a just a tough little guy that can fight you know okay um this is my my, my thought on adrian mm -hmm. broner mm -hmm. I've I've seen enough of him just to where I came to the conclusion, like I said on my video, he is just not a uh, elite fighter. He is just he's a good fighter, but he's just not a standout fighter. I had to fight a draw because I feel like neither man did enough to just clearly win the fight. I mean, Granado was a, a, aggressive. He landed some good shots at time, but he just he just couldn't secure rounds because. When you would think, okay, Granado's about to win his round, Adrian Broner would go on a rally. He had throw some, land mm -hmm. some big shots, and then that would secure him some of those rounds. So those rounds were very – if I've ever seen a fight where you had rounds were, that were like pick them, it was that fight. But I will say this about Granado. He's a he's a tough guy, man. And I, I would like to see more of the dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, he have nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it, it, he didn't lose the fight. But then he didn't win it neither. I mean, on record, he lost the fight, but he didn't lose the fight. He held his own against Adrian Boner, and then that's just the bottom line. But getting back to Broner, I just think his mind is just everywhere else except the ring. You know, this dude is making rap videos. He's coming into the ring with Kodak Black. I just think this dude is not 100% committed to boxing. He shows people every time he performs. And I, I just think the hype is over now. He is who he is. Oh, he is who he is. Definitely. Yeah, we yeah we saw it in the Maidana fight. We saw it in the Sean Porter fight, and we saw it yesterday. This dude cannot make no adjustments to pressure fighters. Mm -hmm. He just do not look good against those type of type of guys. So to me, it is what it is. I just think Adrian Broner. I really looked at him and I analyzed him as a fighter at one forty seven. I don't see him beating guys like. I don't see him beating Sean Porter in a rematch or Keith Thurman or Danny Garcia. Uh, Spence destroys him. Spence makes him probably retire. He already so, beat him in sparring. He destroyed him in sparring. Yeah, so I don't know where Adrian Broner could go as far as 147. I would question whether he could beat Lamar Peterson. That's what I said I yesterday would, in my video. I, I would question that too. I would probably favor Lamar Peterson, so... As far as Adrian Broder go, man, the jury is out, and we have a conviction. The dude is just not an elite fighter. He's just a good fighter, but he's not a great fighter. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. And and even if, you know what, I, uh, to, to add to what you say, even if Adrian Broner didn't have those um, – those bad moments in his in his career, he would still be a B level fighter. He's not. He's. It, 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 it's such confusion with him to to the average fan because outside the ring he talks like like he is the next coming of Floyd Mayweather, and then when he gets in the ring, it's like, oh, he's mediocre. But the good thing about you and I is we we can separate what happens outside the ring in terms of promotion, in terms of what actually happens in the ring. I've accepted who he is, and, and, and I've said this in previous videos, but I get so much hate because people say, oh, you're coming down on a black fighter. Oh, oh. You, you need, yeah, like I, like some of my comments, I'm like, I don't, 
no, I just don't think he's that good, you know? And and he doesn't have that organic determination to be great. You know, that that that's far and in between. And he's he's a rich man. I'm happy that he's a rich man. I'm glad he can take care of his uh his five kids and I guess his fiance now. I don't know if it's his girlfriend or fiance, but uh, you know, he's worked the system. You know, he's got four belts against one somebody and three nobodies. And uh, um, he won because now it's about to get real thick for him. If he stays at 147, he has to pick another fighter. Who can he pick? See, that's the, that's the question. I mean, uh, let me ask you this. Do you think he could even beat Colazzo? You know, I uh, I would pick Colazzo in that fight just be- just because of Colazzo's ability to withstand pressure. You know. Okay. See, now we know that's a problem. <laughs> okay, I I wouldn't. <laughs> I need to make this very clear to anybody that's listening to this video. I don't care what color you are, whether you're black or whether you. I criticize every fucking fighter. I don't give a damn what color they was or color they is. Look. I was never, I, I was criticizing Leo Santa Cruz for his lack of competition. I criticized Gary Russell Jr. for his lack of competition. So, how am I coming down on Adrian Broder? So, I'm not going to lie and say somebody's better than what he really is. You know what I'm saying? I, I've criticized everybody from Michael Jordan to, uh, you know, Michael Jordan as a person, Michael Jordan as a uh, basketball player. So, I don't want to hear that black shit. I'm just keeping it one. I'm just keeping it one hundred. Mm-hmm. I've seen enough of Adrian Broder just to know the dude is just not that good, man. He he isn't. Just like I always thought. I I know you was a big Oscar De La Hoya fan. I always thought Oscar De La Hoya <laughs> was overrated as fuck. Yeah. Thought he was the, I thought he was one of the most overrated fighters I ever seen. And then also I thought Chitter Ray Leonard was a tad bit overrated. So I'm just keeping it. I'm just keeping it one hundred. I mm-hmm. criticize everybody. I just, I just didn't think much of Oscar De La Hoya as a person and as a fighter. I just didn't think he was that good. I yeah. Really didn't. I, he lost every big fight that he was in. All his biggest fights he lost, and the ones he get, did get the decision, it was questionable. Yep, Pernell Most Whitaker. Most people think he didn't beat Pernell Whitaker. Yeah. Most people didn't think he beat I Corte. I Corte. So, mm-hmm. And then, okay, the Trinidad fight, call it whatever you want to call it. He went four rounds without the last four rounds without even throwing a punch. <laughs> so, I mean, let, let, let's just keep it 100, man. Mm-hmm. I just wish people would stop with this shit. Yeah. Okay. I, I was more in love with, with his story. You know, me being raised in L.A., you know what I mean? Seeing him in the paper every day. You have no choice but to get acclimated to him. You know what I mean? And uh, so his, his narrative was dope to me, you know, because I come from a single-parent home. You know, and uh, poverty, impoverished background. So I absolutely love the story. You know, you get attached to it. But yeah, you're right. I always tell people he never beat an elite black fighter. So, well, Pernell Whitaker, but I don't think he beat Pernell Whitaker. Uh, yeah, you don't even want to have that that conversation. I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just keeping it 100. It, I, I mean, I just thought he was just overrated because. I looked at all his big fights and he lost them. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, even the fight that put him into retirement, the fight with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao. Uh-huh. So I'm just looking at, damn, what big fight did he, did he ever win? I mean, I give him credit. He made a shitload of money in boxing. At one time, he was the number one guy. He was one of the most popular boxers in the world. So, I mean, hey, I, I, I'm, I give him props. He, mm-hmm. he flourished. He made a shitload of money. So, props to him. Sure. <laughs> sure. But uh, getting back to Broner, who can he beat? Maybe Sammy Vasquez. <laughs> he, might, he might get beat him. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, he... I mean, this dude, did you, have you really looked at him? This dude... He has the opportunity to let his hands go. He has fast hit, but he won't throw punches. And, mm-hmm. and to be honest with you, he was lucky that the ref didn't take points from him. Now, I understand 
that you clinch your fights to slow down the momentum of, a, of your opponent just in case he's starting to, like, tee off on you. But this dude was just obsessively grabbing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just to the point to where the ref should have, like, warned him, and he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Then it was the issue about the judges. You know, all three of those judges were from somewhere in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Two of the three. I think one was from New Jersey. Okay, yeah. okay. I uh -huh. thought three of them might uh -huh. have been from... From Ohio. At least so, two were. At least I don't know where the third one was from, but I but but I went back and looked at that. But if you watch the overall fight, you was thinking to yourself, okay, you're at home. You supposed to put on a clinic. Yeah. You just you fought like an average guy. Say what you want to say about Andre Ward. When he fights home in Oakland, he fights. Mm -hmm. He fights to win. He he flat out wins. It's no question that it's none of this man. Andre Ward looked bad. I want look, look, like I said, he looked average. He did. He did. And it's just time for us to just tell the truth as boxing fans. We we bought into the hype. We bought into, you know, the, the flashiness. He he knows how to sell himself. But when you get past, you know, the you know, the rapping, the gold teeth, you know, the jewelry, <laughs> it's just like it's just really nothing there. Mm-hmm. I just think he been. I just think he didn't got away so far with like fooling public, but he's. I've just seen he's just not that good, man. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, the some of the fights he won, he should have destroyed the dudes. He should have yeah. destroyed John Molina. Yeah. And I mean, even if he and then he's undisciplined enough to he's not disciplined enough to try to stay at one forty, because then there's Crawford. <laughs> and is he willing to get in the ring with Crawford? So it's sort of like he like sort of like he's stuck in the middle. It's sort of like what does he want to do? And to me, I think Adrian Broner need to decide if do he really want to be a boxer or do he want to be a actor or some kind of entertainer? And then <laughs> I have to ask this question. If he's fully gonna commit to boxing, maybe it's time for him to change trainers because maybe he's got all he's got out of the dude that What's his trainer's name? Stafford? My, yeah, Mike Stafford. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just think he's reached his limit with Stafford. Mm -hmm. Because I just think he can't, Stafford can't teach him how to be any different. And I feel like this, when you win in fights like these, or where you're barely winning, or when you have a little bit of a controversial mm -hmm. win, it's sort of like, man, you got to look at yourself and be like, damn, man, maybe it's time to go elsewhere. And I know what it's like to, he's been with that dude for a while. But if you really want to advance your career in boxing, sometimes you have to, you know, you have to make changes. You're right. So You're absolutely I wonder, right. I have to wonder, maybe Matt, Matt Stafford is not the guy for him. I think maybe he needs to look to go elsewhere. I don't know who, who else he could go to. I got a couple of names. I mean, if he's serious about boxing, maybe he should go to, uh, maybe he should go to Mayweather Sr. Because he's very flat-footed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he just doesn't know how to let his hands go. Mm -hmm. So, and you would think at this, you know, at this, you know, this far in his career, he would, you know, he would be more advanced than what he really is. And the dude just do not let his hands go. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, it, it, after a while, you get, you know, you just get pissed off watching this dude hmm. fight. Just like, man, some, like I said, something is missing with Adrian Broner. And it's the damn shame that boxing fans can't find it, and neither neither can he. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. I'm